The following program is paid for by the friends and ministry partners of the Hour of Power. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Welcome, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Thank you for driving over here this morning. Thank you for tuning in with us today. We love you. You know, I've been thinking a lot about the quote this week that says, do not be pushed by your problems, but be led by your dreams. And it is so true, it's so easy to get consumed by the problems in our lives. But may we be people who never stop dreaming and who never stop developing the gifts that God has given us. Amen. Would you turn around and shake the hand of the person next to you and say, God loves you and so do I. And you picked a good day to come to church. It's going to be a good music day. And uh, we have Ken Miedema in the house, which is always fun. If you don't know our friend Ken, we got to spend some time last night, and uh, we got a little private concert. It was wonderful. You might not be able to tell Ken is blind, and he's been playing piano since age five. And last night, people were telling stories, and he would just write a song. Uh, on the spot, according to people's stories. Today, um, he will even write on the spot, he'll just make up a song at the end of the service based on my sermon. Is that right, Kim? Okay, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a positive nod here. So whatever he sings at the end, he doesn't know what he's going to sing even now. He's literally going to be making it up as he goes along, and it's really good. <laughs> so we're so glad to have you here, and all of our musicians. Mm -hmm. But most of all, we're just so happy to have you here. And, and uh, we know that whatever you brought into this place, whether you're watching on TV or you're, you're coming in just from, from your home or wherever, uh, you're going to leave here with a fresh wind, new life, fresh vision. You're going to leave with that weight off your shoulders. You're going to get a word from God today. He's going to speak to your heart directly. You're his kid and he loves you. And uh, we just believe that and we speak that with faith over you this morning. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you love us, that you haven't given up on us, that you look at us with love, and that your arms are always open wide, that you speak over us blessing and wisdom, life, encouragement. We thank you, God, that you have not come to condemn us, but to give us life. We thank you for that. So we receive it by faith, in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.
You may be seated. In preparation for Bobby's message, the words of our Lord found in Psalm 23, my favorite chapter in the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Church family, the Lord is our shepherd. When my days grow tedious and my nights Go cold, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. When my mind grows weary and my flesh grows old, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. Yes, I will sing, I will sing, just like a bird, bird upon the wind. Till my story is told, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. I'm singing that a little child shall lead them, and the lion will lie down with the lamb, and there will be no war nor famine anymore. In the land of the great I am. Ah. If the road gets rugged and I'm far from home, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. When I look for the answers and they just won't come, I will sing hallelujah, I will sing. I will sing. I will sing until ah, winter turns to 
spring I will keep on singing in the darkness and the gloom I will sing hallelujah I will sing I will sing in the days of danger and the time of war I will sing hallelujah I will sing when the sky breaks open and the hate guns roar I will sing hallelujah I will sing I will sing I will sing until ah, death has lost its sting I will keep on singing till we fight no more I will sing hallelujah I will sing A little child shall lead them the light will lie down with the lamb And there will be no war nor famine anymore In the land of the great I am A little child shall lead them And the light will lie down with the lamb And there will be no war nor famine Wow. <laughs> there will be no war or famine anymore in the land of the great I am. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, as we... Exactly. As we move into a time of offering, we do exactly what Ken just sang about. We sing hallelujah. We declare praises to God. We, we say that, God, you are on a rescue mission to this world, and we want to be part of what you are doing. We want to be part of ending that war, of ending the famine, and of declaring that this is the land of the great I Am. And we keep that in mind this morning as we invite the ushers forward as we take this morning's tithes and offerings. Hello friends, here at Shepherd's Grove and Hour of Power, we believe that the moment you walk through the doors of our church or the moment you tune in to Hour of Power, you become part of our spiritual family. I was raised in the scriptures and scripture is powerful. Today I want to send you one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 103. This eight by 10 piece of wall art is a perfect reminder of God's love for you. Call us, write, or go online today to request the scripture and we will add your name to our mailing list. Every day we are bombarded by messages the world sends us and honestly it's overwhelming. But by spending time in the word, by memorizing scripture, it helps us renew our minds and tune out those noises. And remember, as always friends, God loves you and so do I. To join our mailing list, please call, write, or go online today. To thank you for joining us, we will send you this beautiful two-sided scripture wall art with Bless the Lord, O My Soul on one side and Psalm 103 verses 1 through 5 on the other. Available in a modern print, black and white, or classic style in color, this scripture is a daily reminder of God's love for you. Please call, write, or go online today. Hi, thanks for watching the Hour of Power today. We are in a message series called I Am, Knowing God by Name. In this series, we'll discover who the scriptures say God is and what these truths mean for you. As part of this series, our team has put together an awesome coffee table book that's filled with inspirational illustrations and scriptural references. I'm excited to share this new I Am message series with you. No matter who you are, you're worthy of love and belonging. You're a child of God loved by the most amazing person in the world. And this message series is a powerful reminder of God's love for us. Friends, God is present and at work in your life and in the lives of others through your prayers and partnership with the Hour of Power. Thank you. To request your copy of the book, I Am Knowing God by Name, as well as a DVD or CD of Bobby's I Am message series, please call, write, or go online today. 
Based on Bobby's message series, this coffee table book will remind you of all the ways God promises to be Yahweh for you. Each chapter is filled with inspirational illustrations and scripture references designed to help you in your daily walk with God. Your generous gift of $75 or more will include the book and a three-disc DVD set or the book and a four-disc CD set. Thank you for watching The Hour of Power and for your ongoing generous support to help keep this program on the air. Now, let's return to the service. Mama used to read me a story from the Bible about a beggar man who lay by the healing stream. Oh, a man had no body to take him to the water. Broken body, broken heart, and broken dreams. Along comes Mr. Jesus. Strolling up beside him all at once, they're having this little talk. When the talk is over, Jesus puts his hand out and said, Rise up, brother, pick up your bed and walk. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Woo. Hey. Don't we have great musicians? We, they really are great. We're so, so proud and so thankful for our orchestra, Mark Riley and her choir, Michael Skidgel. Thank you, guys. And there's somebody else I want to uh, point out today, and that's Mr. Patrick Blackwell. Would you please stand, Patrick? We want to just honor you. Patrick just won a Grammy. It was for his performance in the L.A. Opera, The Ghost of Both Sides. So, thank you, congratulations, you deserve it, and uh, thank you so much, and thank you for the gift that you give us here in the church every, every Sunday. We love you. Welcome. We're so 
Mr. Black, you're joining us today. That applause is for you. We want you to know we love you. We've got your back. We are praying for you. That Shepherd's Grove is a community that loves you. And if you're ever in this area, please come down here. We want to meet you. We think you're a part of our church. And I want to give you a big hug. So does Hannah at the door. We want to say hello to you. So, so come down. We have a great church. We love children. Bring them. We'll teach them the things of God. Friends, would you hold your hands out like this as a sign of receiving? And we're going to say this creed together. I am not what I do. I am not what I have. I am not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks. You can be seated. Good news, by the way, I just finished writing a book on that creed. So I just turned it in. It was exhausting. And uh, it'll come out next year in spring. But if you want to follow that journey with me, I'm on Facebook. I'm pretty active there. And I post little videos every morning now to encourage people. So if you want to follow that journey or even help me in that process, because it's a year process of editing and doing things, um, uh, I would, if you're into that sort of thing, would love to to um, connect with you. So I'm really thrilled, though, because it just felt like having a, just a big weight off my shoulders. It was something I've been waiting to write for years and finally had the opportunity. And there was just this heaviness to it because it's so, you know, it's so important. And um, anyway, so we're looking forward to It'll be a year. It's still a ways away, but I'm very glad to be done with that. God is so good. He is just, he is just so, so faithful. Man, maybe you come to church today and you think God is mad at you. He's not. He loves you. Maybe you think God's abandoned you because of all the challenges you're going through. He hasn't. He's shepherding you into victory. Maybe you've been betrayed, tricked, lied to, swindled. All the evil and all the wrong, all the challenges you've faced, God's going to work it out for good, for your good and for the blessing of others. He's so good. He hasn't abandoned you. He loves you. And if you're hearing this right now, it's because he wants you to. He wants you to know that he is going to shepherd you unto victory. And that whatever it is you're going through, he's there with you in that pain. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't forgotten you. He will bring you through. Amen. Amen. Today we're studying one of the names of God, and it's a surprising name. It is Yahweh Ra'ah, or Jehovah Ra'ah, which means I am the Lord your shepherd. When the Old Testament introduced this as a name for God, it might have been surprising to that generation, because a shepherd was a very humble or lowly job. And so for God, who is the master of the universe, you know, the creator of all, the all-powerful one, to say, but I'm your shepherd, is to say, in no uncertain terms, I am with you. I'm alongside you. I am for you. God is for you, not against you. Amen. Now, what is a shepherd like? And many of us don't know anymore because there's not really very many shepherds left. But in the Old Testament days, in the Bible days, a lot of people were shepherds. And this was something that an agrarian people would understand. A shepherd is not a butcher. A shepherd is someone who cares for his sheep. A shepherd has little names for his pets. And they are like his pets, little chop chop and white muffin and that's enough. He knows them all by name and they know his voice and it's like they're friends. And what's really important is that in the Bible days, sheep weren't just owned by one guy. It was the property of like a whole village. So the shepherd was uh, called by his community to guard the wealth of that village represented in these sheep. These sheep represent 
the bulk of the economy of most small villages. So you'd have a shepherd, and his job is to protect the sheep. So by God calling us his sheep, he's like saying, I know you personally. I know your name. And to me, you are incredibly valuable. Isn't that good news? That God considers you valuable in the same way that a shepherd values his sheep. He values you. Maybe you don't feel valued today. Maybe you heard from pastors, religious folks, uh, things that were not true. That God hates you. He's angry at you. He's mad at you. He's not. He's your shepherd. and He loves you. The shepherd defends the sheep. The shepherd is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. If the lion or a predator comes to kill one of his sheep, the shepherd bravely stands in the way. God's going to defend you. Whatever it is you're going through, you feel maybe it's a court case. Maybe you, you just feel like you're being persecuted. Maybe you feel judged. Maybe you just feel like the whole world is crashing on you. God is going to defend you. And he has very strong arms. 16-inch biceps. <laughs> very nice. He will defend you. The shepherd will defend you. And the shepherd also provides for his sheep. That line in Psalm 23 when it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. You know why a sheep lays down in green pastures? Green pastures for a sheep is food. When the sheep lies down in green pastures, he's full. He's had a good meal. He's had such a good meal, he's taken a nap. And that is the metaphor God uses in his shepherding for us. He's going to provide for you. You're going to have not enough. You're going to have more than enough. You're going to have so much that you'll rest in the loving, warm presence of the good shepherd who says, when you wake up, have some more. On the house, he's going to provide for you. Maybe you come to church today and you don't know how you're going to pay that next bill. Maybe you're worried about your job. I want you to know, he provides for us. He's a shepherd. He's not going to let you go hungry. And although we go through challenges in life, he is always so faithful to return to us a hundredfold all that was lost because of our journey and because of our faith. He'll provide for you. And the shepherd guides. I don't know about you, but I need guidance. You know, sheep are wonderful animals, but they're easily spooked. Maybe you feel like you've made a lot of bad decisions in your life. Maybe you feel like you've gone down the wrong path. The Lord is here not to condemn you, but to say, my son, my beloved daughter, this is the way to go. This is the path that leads to life. Follow me. You don't have to worry. Isn't that good news? He's our shepherd. And we call our church Shepherd's Grove because we understand this is the kind of God we serve. He provides he cares, he loves, he guards, and he guides. That's good news. And he is faithful even when we are failures. That's even better news. The story we've been looking at for the last few weeks is the story of a family that God chose to save the whole world. We're in the part of the story where uh, we're in the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, up to this point, the world is, you know, God's good and wonderful and perfect creation has been ruined by mankind's evil and violence. Mankind has gone to war and invited all sorts of darkness into this world, and God decides to pick one family, and through that one family, he's going to rescue the whole world, and that family is Abraham. And this covenant he makes with Abraham is, Abraham, you are going to be a I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing to the whole world. And can I tell you, this family is messed up. You think your family is weird? Abraham's family is messed, messed up, big time. It's, it kicks off where Abraham decides to like, give his wife away to a king, pretending He's her brother so that he doesn't get killed. What a hero, huh? <laughs> when they don't have enough 
faith to believe in the miracle, she says to his husband, sleep with my slave girl and God will fulfill the promise through her. The story we talked about last week, Jacob tricks his brother Esau by putting goat skin on his arms to trick the blind father into giving him the inheritance. And one time after another, Abraham's family who's been given this promise fails, makes moral mistakes, breaks their a covenant with God, does all sorts of awful things, but God continues to hold up his promise to them. He reaffirms it. He brings them through and brings redemption in every story. And this is good news for us because you need to know, you need to know that the dream God put in your heart, he didn't kill because you made a mistake. You need to know that you are alive and in this building or watching on this channel because God wants to remind you that guilt is the, maybe the number one thing that is keeping you from fulfilling your destiny. And that today you have the opportunity to get a fresh wind, a fresh vision, and a fresh perspective for your life. And that he is not going to withhold your destiny because you messed up. That's called being human. He fulfilled Abraham's covenant and he'll fulfill the promise he made to your heart. We see this in the story of Joseph. Joseph was one of the 12 tribes. So Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons. And God put a dream in Joseph's heart, a big dream. Joseph had 11 brothers. He was the second youngest. And uh, Joseph was annoying. He would always tell his brothers about all the great things he was going to do. He would say he had a dream that they were going to bow down to him someday. This did not help him in his <laughs> PR uh, with his brothers. <laughs> Beyond this, to add insult to injury, Joseph was by far the dad's favorite, Jacob. Jacob would just tell them, hey guys, I like you guys, but by the way, Joseph's my favorite. He's great. In fact, I like him so much, I'm going to put together a Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to ask him to wear this just to remind all y'all he's my favorite. <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? Again, this family's totally messed up. Anyway, so Joseph has this technicolor dream coat, a symbol of his father's love and favor, and he seems to have no problem flaunting it in front of his brothers, and he continues to remind them of his dream. One day, his father sends him to go get his 11 brothers. They're out in the field, and by the way, they're all shepherds, and God speaks over Joseph twice, I will be your shepherd, and this promise Joseph will need because little does he know, he's about to go on the most painful, horrible, difficult journey of his life. He's going to need a shepherd. Maybe you're there, and you need a shepherd. He's with you. Joseph is walking to his big brothers, presumably, whom he loves and adores, even though he naively is insulting them. And they say this, here comes that dreamer. And they plotted to kill him. This is an important part of the story. Because if you trust your life to Christ, he's put a dream in your heart. He's put a dream in your heart. To dream is to be alive. To daydream and write things on cocktail napkins and wonder what the future could hold. To believe in possibility and opportunity is one of the greatest things we can enjoy as people. But what we must never forget is that when God puts a dream in our hearts, others will notice it and desire to destroy it. Maybe you've 
got to a point where you had a dream in your heart and people you loved, maybe your brothers and sisters, maybe your own family set out to destroy you because of that dream. I want you to know God's going to shepherd you unto victory. He did for Joseph and he will for you. And that's very good news. They said, here comes that dreamer, and they plotted to kill him. And as he's coming, they're like, all right, we're going to kill this guy. We are going to take that technicolor dream coat and just like cut it up and slather it in his blood and give it to our dad and tell him that this was a wild animal. And as he's coming, the oldest brother, Reuben, says, guys, 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 this is crazy. We can't just kill our brother. Let's sell him into slavery. We don't want to lose money on this. So I thought that was funnier, but they, they, sell, they sell their little brother for eight shekels of silver. And here's Joseph, betrayed. He's sitting in a caged box, wondering what on earth just happened. He was just running out with a big old smile on his face to get his brothers, and they like bound him and sold him to Ishmaelites. And here he is on his way to Egypt, wondering what is going on. And you know what's profound about this story is Joseph didn't know that being sold into slavery was actually lucky. He didn't know they were going to kill him. That he actually barely and narrowly escaped death. He thinks this is the worst thing that's ever happened to him. And in a way it is, but it could have been a lot worse. And his journey really has only begun. And there he is on his way to Egypt. And when he arrives, a, an official... An Egyptian official named Potiphar buys him. And Potiphar finds out very quickly that this young man has a lot of talent for shopkeeping. He puts him in charge of his slaves. He puts him in charge of his household. Puts him in charge of everything. And now Joseph's kind of like feeling like he's back on top. He's like, you know, Potiphar says, this man is amazing. I'm going to put you in charge of everything. And I'm going to keep... This is the kind of guy, if you're a business owner you want to hire and you don't want anybody to find out about, right? This is like, awesome. One day Potiphar is gone and his young, beautiful wife sees Joseph working on something like with a six pack and he looks awesome and she's a bit lonely and uh, Potiphar and her maybe are having trouble and so she reaches out to Joseph. Hey Joseph, just between you and I, my bed's a little cold tonight. <laughs> What you up to? <laughs> she tries to seduce Joseph. And he says, you evil woman. Evil woman. <laughs> he looks at her and he says, he looks at her and he says, your husband, Potiphar, has entrusted everything to me except you because you're his wife. I'm not going to sleep with you. And at that point, she wants him all the more, of course. And she starts reaching for him, grabbing for his clothing. And he's like, no! And all the men in here, if you're an 18-year-old guy and some, you know, hot... Anyway, we're going to get past that. All I'm saying is, this is a good man. This is a good, good... This is a good man. He's very good. And he says, no, and he... She's pulling on his clothes, and he breaks free from his clothes and runs away from the house naked. <laughs> and of course, she's humiliated. And she tells her husband, Potiphar, he tried to get into my bed. And as, he, as, it, as the guards came, I grabbed his robe to show you proof. Man, no good deed goes unpunished, huh? Again lied about, betrayed. This is a good man. Maybe you're here today and you've been betrayed. Maybe you've lost everything. Maybe you're here today and something like that happened to you. I want you to know God has not abandoned you. He's shepherding you. It's going to be okay. He's going to take you to victory. So, of course, he winds up in prison. And there in prison... The warden gives him some menial job, and he begins to do it, and the warden's like, whoa, this guy's good. And he puts him in charge of the whole prison. 
Again, you just see the promise of God over Joseph. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Even in prison, Joseph is blessed and he's a blessing to others. Isn't that amazing? That's God's promise for you, my friends. Believe it. So there he is in prison. He's in charge of everything. And then finally he gets this opportunity. There's a cupbearer and a bread maker come to him and they said, we have these horrible dreams. He interprets the dreams. One guy goes on, the other guy gets killed. And he says to the guy, the cupbearer, hey, when you go see the king, tell him my story. And he's like, my friend, you have no idea what you've done for me. I absolutely will tell him. I'm going to get you out of here. And of course, he gets to the king, and what happens? He completely forgets. Maybe you're here today, and somebody's taking credit for your work. Maybe you're listening to the sound of my voice, and you feel as though you've been forgotten. You've been totally overlooked. I want you to know it's okay because in Joseph's case, this is one of the luckiest things in the whole story because it's a long time later. All of a sudden, the Pharaoh has this big dream and nobody can interpret it. And then all of a sudden, the cupbearer remembers Joseph and he says, King, there's this guy. He interpreted my dream and he was right and he could interpret your dream. And so the Pharaoh brings him up and Joseph interprets this dream. And now Pharaoh puts him in charge of the whole country. And in those days, Egypt was the biggest, baddest, richest empire in the world. He became the number two most powerful man alive. And it wasn't for his ego. It was to save Egypt. And he did. You see, God showed him that Egypt would be going into a famine and using his skills that he learned that whole journey, he prepared Egypt for that famine and he saved the whole country. He saved millions of lives. And later on, he would even save his brothers who thought he was probably dead or in some other country. They come to Egypt for grain because they're starving. There's this big like reality TV show, you know, bachelor type reveal, you know, like, I'm your brother. And they're all like, and, and their response is, no, please don't kill us. They're afraid of him. Of course, and they should be. He's a powerful man. He can have them killed on the spot. And what he says to them is the theme of the gospel, of the whole story. And that is what you meant for evil, God meant for good in order that many lives could be saved. Despite the failures of our family and of you and of me, God brought us to this point that the world might be blessed through our blessing. He swore to our great-grandfather Abraham that we would be blessed to be a blessing to the world. And despite our failures, he has brought us here to save many lives. And there's no way Joseph could have seen in the moment when he went from betrayal of his brothers to the betrayal of Potiphar's wife to rotting in a prison, that that was a part of God's plan to save millions of lives. The Bible says that when he was in that prison, it says God was there with him. He was with them in the prison. He was with him in the cage. He was with him in the betrayal. And he was with him when he was running across a field naked, wondering what his life was going to be like. He was with him and never abandoned him. And because of this, God was able to save a whole nation. God shepherded him to the fulfillment of the dream uh, he put in his heart. It's time to dream again, friend. Maybe you're here today and, and you, just, you just feel like you're going through a lot. Maybe you're in a prison. Maybe you're being betrayed. Maybe you're being tricked by your siblings or by people you love and you just don't know what's next. Maybe you feel like, Bobby, you don't understand. I, I can't go it back. I'm in too deep. I can't get out of this. Not true. Not only can you get out of this, you will get out of this. God is going to get you out of this. Keep hope alive. He did it for Joseph. He'll do it for you. He's faithful, even in our faithlessness. The Bible says, even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. 
Maybe you're in life and you just feel like you're going through so much and you wonder if that dream will ever come to pass. But with every disappointment, with every major setback, with every trick and with every act of evil against you and with every bit of bad luck, little do you know, you're like an arrow being pulled back in a bow and the tension between you and your destiny only grows and you're not far now from when God will release you. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. Man, you're gonna be so blessed. You're gonna be blessed to be a blessing. You're gonna be above and not beneath. You're gonna have more than enough. Your cup is gonna run over. You're gonna lay down in green pastures. You're gonna be restored. You're gonna have full batteries. You're gonna have fresh vision. You're gonna have victory after victory because he chose you. And that is what Jesus says. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And he says to them, you did not choose me, but I chose you and chose you to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And this morning, remember, you didn't choose him. He chose you. He picked you. Bearing fruit, being full of joy, it's your destiny. You haven't lost your calling. In fact, I even sense right now the Holy Spirit is drumming up in you a fresh dream, a fresh vision, and fresh batteries. Receive it. Don't push that down. Let it blossom in your heart. It's going to give you life, and it's going to give you a reason to wake up in the morning. God's going to bless you so you can be a blessing to the whole world. He's going to bless you, and you're going to bless the whole world. I can't wait to see it. I'm so proud of you. You haven't lost your calling because the calling, the one who called you hasn't given up on you yet he still believes in you're still alive the only time you lose your calling is when you die and you're alive and that's good so stay poised and ready so much of life is being ready for those opportunities that come you know Warren Buffett the richest man in the world he made 90 percent of his wealth in 10 trades that's like one trade he's like 87 or something that's like one trade every 10 or so years He was poised and ready uh, for victory. So be ready this week. Be poised. Because now that you've heard this, God has built up faith in your heart and you're ready to receive the good thing that's going to come. I believe it. Be poised for the opportunity and receive it in Jesus' name. And let me just speak this blessing over you. Will you hold your hands out like this to receive what God wants to say over you? Take a deep breath. The Spirit of God is called Ruach. It means breath or wind or life. We're just going to breathe in the truth of the word of God. The Lord is your shepherd. You will lack nothing. He will cause you to lie down in green pastures. He's going to lead you along quiet waters. He is even now refreshing your soul. He will guide you along the right paths for his namesake. Even though now you're walking through the darkest valley, don't be afraid of evil. He is with you. His rod and his staff, let them comfort you. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He's anointing your head with oil. Your cup is overflowing. Surely, goodness and everlasting love will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Friends, 
to work beside you And now you're down on your knees Do you remember the dream that you had To find yourself in a third world country somewhere Helping a village struck by poverty Showing them God's love and God's care now you sit in your house alone And now you're lying there all on your own And you think the dream will never come to pass And it's gone, hell it's gone Do you remember the dream that you had long ago? When you were young and you knew everything Far away, and you wonder if there will ever be a chance to dream again. Oh, life's not so bad. You've got a rich house, or you've got a decent job, but it's not what you dreamed, it's not what you want, or maybe it's bad and you're in a cell, or you're drunk on your bottom this is the time to remember the God who is the giver of dreams has not abandoned you the God who is the giver of dreams has not let you go No matter how long it takes God will bring your dreams to pass, my friend For God, who is the giver of dreams Will not let you go Thank you for being here. You're gonna have an awesome week. You're gonna be blessed this week. You're gonna make the right choices. You're gonna go down the path of life and not the path of death. God's gonna bless every step you take. He's gonna open doors no man could shut. He's gonna shut doors no man could open. It's gonna be a good week. If you believe it, say amen. amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hi, thanks for watching the Hour of Power today. We are in a message series called I Am, Knowing God by Name. In this series, we'll discover who the scriptures say God is and what these truths mean for you. As part of this series, our team has put together an awesome coffee table book that's filled with inspirational illustrations and scriptural references. I'm excited to share this new I Am message series with you. No matter who you are, you're worthy of love and belonging. You're a child of God, loved by the most amazing person in the world. And this message series is a powerful reminder of God's love for us. Friends, God is present and at work in your life and in the lives of others through your prayers and partnership with the Hour of Power. Thank you. To request your copy of the book, I Am, Knowing God by Name, as well as a DVD or CD of Bobby's I Am Message series, please call, write, or go online today. Based on Bobby's Message series, this coffee table book will remind you of all the ways God promises to be Yahweh through you. Each chapter is filled with inspirational illustrations and scripture references designed to help you in your daily walk with God. 
Your generous gift of $75 or more will include the book and a three-disc DVD set or the book and a four-disc CD set. Thank you for watching The Hour of Power and for your ongoing generous support to help keep this program on the air. Hello friends, here at Shepherd's Grove and Hour of Power, we believe that the moment you walk through the doors of our church or the moment you tune in to Hour of Power, you become part of our spiritual family. I was raised in the scriptures and scripture is powerful. Today I want to send you one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 103. This eight by 10 piece of wall art is a perfect reminder of God's love for you. Call us, write, or go online today to request the scripture and we will add your name to our mailing list. Every day we are bombarded by messages the world sends us and honestly it's overwhelming. But by spending time in the word, by memorizing scripture, it helps us renew our minds and tune out those noises. And remember, as always friends, God loves you and so do I. To join our mailing list, please call, write, or go online today. To thank you for joining us, we will send you this beautiful two-sided scripture wall art with Bless the Lord, O my soul, on one side and Psalm 103 verses 1 through 5 on the other. Available in a modern print, black and white, or classic style in color, this scripture is a daily reminder of God's love for you. Please call, write, or go online today. The preceding program was paid for by the friends and ministry partners of the Hour of Power and is accredited by the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability.